Today, we will be discussing merger of Hyderabad state and after. What is merger of Hyderabad state? Hyderabad state, an independent princely state, what, sorry, Hyderabad, a princely state, an independent state, was merged with Indian Union. Accession, merger, takeover. These three words are used politically during that period. It is not independence or liberation. These two words are not used. Because in the latter stage, when we are talking about political aspects, in the recent years, every year on September 17th, we uh, not celebrate exactly, we observe the day of Hyderabad's merger with Indian Union. On that day, on that day, generally we will have a debate whether it is liberation or treachery or merger. So merger is the correct political word because Hyderabad state, a princely state was not liberated as the wishes of people and something else. It is Indian Union taking over the Hyderabad state which is an independent state. So there are many things unfolding in this period. Basically, this story goes back to 1947, August 15th. 1947, August 15th, India became independent. But at the time, there were many princely states which were independent. They were not part of the British India, so that it can be part of the independent India. There were many princely states which were independent and having treaties with British independently, apart from the British Indian part. So, the part of British is becoming independent, but the part, the parts, not just part, because there were many princely states. Hyderabad was one of the princely state ruled by Nizams. Asafzahi is the dynasty and Nizam is the title we call. So, Nizam 1, Nizam 2, 2. The last Nizam was the seventh Nizam, Mir Usman Ali Khan. Our story is going back to the seventh Nizam, Mir Usman Ali Khan's period. Hyderabad's merger should be discussed under this following topics. One is merger of Hyderabad state into Indian Union in 1948. And how the things have unfolded in this period. What were the political aspects? What were the military aspects? And what is the background? All these things will be discussed today. Second is the policies under military rule and Velodi civilian government between 1948 to 1952. And the last part is violation of Mulki rules and its implications. All these things are happening between 1948 to 52. So, first we are talking about the background. In the background, the first and foremost aspect is Mountbatten plan. What is Mountbatten plan? Mountbatten plan was unveiled just when the India is going to become independent. According to Mountbatten plan, the princely states were given the choice to either remain independent or to accede either into India or Pakistan. So there was a choice before the princely states. What is the choice? There are three choices, not just two. Either to join or Pakistan, uh, join Pakistan or India is not the thing. You can be independent and so Nizam chose the other option, not joining in Pakistan, not joining in India. So, Mir Usman Ali Khan, the seventh Nizam, wrote a letter to Viceroy on 8th August 1947, 1947, choosing to be independent. But this was not accepted by many people. Who are the people who can accept it or who can fight it? That is Indian state. Indian state headed by Jawaharlal Nehru, Home Minister Vallabhai Patel and the scenario is completely different. What is happening on one side, Pakistan is settling as a, uh, as a separate state. India is also settling down as a separate state. So in between Pakistan and India, Pakistan and India are trying to gain their strengths. And Jammu Kashmir, Junagadh, Hyderabad, these three are the controversial points. We are not bothered about Kashmir and Junagadh today as far as our topic is concerned. We are concerned about Hyderabad. So what is happening in Hyderabad is there are many theories. Actually whenever we talk about such political things, such instances or such historical junctures, there are many misconceptions. Unless and until we know the real sources, we can't understand what was happening. 
general feature is people were completely inviting Indian Army. So Indian Army came and they have liberated Hyderabad. This is the general notion. Second notion is Rajakars are the most cruelest persons. So people were against Rajakars and Indian Army liberated it. This is the second notion. But many people do not know that there are three parties. One is Nizam and his feudal lords supported supporting Razakars. The second party is communists. The third party is Indian Union. So three parties are there at this juncture. We are going to deal with the three aspects in this period. Yell much less about Telangana armed struggle and communists, but more about Indian Union and Nizam. So what are the sources to study the merger topic in 1948? One is Integration of Indian States by V.P. Menon. This is a very important book written by V.P. Menon. V.P. Menon was the Secretary of the States. Means he was dealing with the affairs of the states. Integration aspect was completely in the hands of Patel and Menon. So he is one authoritative person who can give you the account of merger period. Second book is Hyderabad of the Seven Loaves written by Major General Eli Drus the general military general chief of army of nizam third one is tragedy of hyderabad written by mir layakali that is prime minister of hyderabad the last prime minister of hyderabad who was house under house arrest after the merger after the military's accession of hyderabad state next book is end of an era this is another important man he has written k m munshi has written a book end of an era hyderabad memoirs he was writing the political accounts, how things unveiled in Hyderabad in 1948. And the next book is, important book is, General Jain Choudhury's autobiography narrated to one B.K. Narayan. In this, General Choudhury has said how he was entering into Hyderabad, what were the routes and what was the conditions. Even he was explaining how the Hyderabad state was then, how Hyderabad, because he served in Hyderabad before also. So he was talking, a, he was giving a beautiful account about Sikhidrabad and Hyderabad and Dakani culture. He was appreciating all those things. But this time in this book, he is talking about how the army has entered into Hyderabad and re-entered into Sikhidrabad cantonment and took over the power in Hyderabad state. And the other book is The Destruction of Hyderabad by A.G. Nurani. A.G. Nurani is a political scientist. He has written a beautiful account how things were unveiling. How, what are the angles, different angles which other books are also not giving. Traditional accounts see in a very traditional light. But A.G. Nurani's account is completely different. So, now we will talk about the important people who are the players in this period. One is Jawaharlal Nehru, the Prime Minister and Vallabhbhai Patel, the Home Minister and Mountbatten as we have talked about his plan. His plan is the major plan. Because of his plan, Nizam chose to be independent. Then Mir Usman Ali Khan the king, the Nizam of Hyderabad, then VP Menon, secretary of the states, then Idrus, the commander-in-chief of Hyderabad state, then Mir Layakali, the prime minister, and lastly, Walter Moncton, legal advisor of Nizam. Many of the books do not give the account of Walter Moncton also. Walter Moncton was a senior politician, businessman of Britain, who was the legal advisor of Nizam. So, Nizam tried to be independent till the last moment. Even on 14th August 1947, he was writing letters to the Crown representative and he was asking the Crown representative don't, to, not to abandon him because till then Nizam was completely a ally, a close ally. Starting from 1857, when they have closely allied with British in subjugation of Indian first war of Indian independence, when Ture Khan fought, they sided with British and helped the British resident. So since then, British had closest relations with Hyderabad. They were the trusted allies. Even in 1800 itself, Hyderabad was the first state to enter into the agreement to take the armies to save Nizam state, which is known as subsidiary alliance. So Hyderabad was the first state to take subsidiary alliance, to sign subsidiary alliance. Then 1857 becoming a trusted ally and continuation of all these things. That is why this Nizam was saying that he was pained for abandoning the old ally and unilaterally disbanding all the treaties and leaving us for our fate. This was a letter written to Crown Prince by Nizam. 
So, Nizam did not leave stone, any stone unturned to become independent, to stay independent. But Nehru was talking about taking away the independence from Nizam and making Hyderabad part of India. Governor General, even in the Constant Assembly on 15th August, he was stating that the only state of the first importance that has not acceded in the premier, is the premier state of Hyderabad. This is happening on 15th August. India, a new state is coming into existence, a new nation in that sense. At the dawn itself, India was talking about taking the independence of Hyderabad and making Hyderabad part of India. So, Governor General's speech is talking about Hyderabad. They called it as a premier state. And Mir Nawaz Jain, the agent general of Hyderabad in London, was trying to lobby with the powers of those days. Like Clement Attlee, the president, the British Prime Minister, Henry Truman, United States of America's president. All these things they were trying in all this meantime. And finally, they have approached United Nations Security Council. On August 21st, 1948, Nizam's cablegram to United Nations Security Council was sent and under the United Nations Charter Article 35 to subsection 2, the application or the complaint of Nizam was filed in United Nations Security Council. And then the Security Council was in session. 357 session was being held at Paris. And in that session, first time they have taken up this into their agenda. And again, it, though it was accepted, it was not discussed. 12th and 13th August, again sending telegrams. Again on 16th September, all this is happening in 1948. One year has elapsed. Like 1947, India gained independence. Till then, what they were having in Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad state, we'll see. But the gap between 47 independence and 48, approaching Security Council, we are recounting the dates. 16th September and 17th September, Again, the Security Council has taken up the issue of Hyderabad. And 20th September, Nizam has surrendered. But we are going back. On 12th and 13th August, they sent cables. On 16th September, 17th September, discussion was being held. But really, the operation, military operation, which we are talking about as Operation Polo, which through which India has entered into Hyderabad state, started on 13th and ended on 17th. So, 16th September and 17th September were important dates, but United Nations Security Council could not discuss the issue. Only primary talk was there. It's because the representatives of Indian state were not ready to discuss. The Mudaliyar, who, who was representing Indian state, said, I have to talk to the government, then only Indian government, then only I can give you the answers. So, automatically it is postponed. But on 20th September, by the time, 20th September 1948, Nizam surrendered. On 17th itself, surrender is happening. So on 20th September, since Nizam has surrendered, now the issue has been completely changed. The change of issue is like the United Nations Security Council is trying to discuss whether Nizam's withdrawal of application was genuine or under duress. So what has happened? The first application was, India is invading Hyderabad. India is invading, please save us. Please ask India to not to interfere into our affairs. This was the application. But this application is completely changing its tone. Now, United Nations Security Council is discussing whether this application, actually on 17th, after 17th, Nizam was sending a cablegram, withdrawing the application under the duress actually. When you are surrendering, you are under du duress. But United Nations Security Council is discussing whether this uh, uh, withdrawal of application is under duress or genuine. So, United Nations Security Council or Clement Attlee or Truman or International Fora could not come to the help of Nizam. This is one thing because of many aspects. Immediately after the UNSC, India became a member in United Nations Security Council also. So, a violator in, in the sense of political terminology became a member. The complainant completely got surrendered. This is what political 
scholars discuss about United Nations Security Council and the relation of Nizam state. So, even after this, the accession means taking over of Hyderabad was an issue which was not a good issue for India's political prestige. It was a thorn. It was an embarrassment. So, it is unfolding in a different dimension. We will talk about it, how it is unfolding. But still, at the center, in the international fora, this, this act of accession was still alive. Because though Nizam is not raising the issue, who will raise the issue? The issue will be raised by Pakistan. Because Pakistan is also representing in United Nations Security Council or other foras. So, so what happened at United Nations Security Council? Ramaswamy Mudilyar was the representative of Indian government. Nawab Moyen Nawaz Jeng was the representative of Hyderabad state. On December 20, 1949, now I am going one year further. 47 independence, 48 applications and taking over of Hyderabad or merger of Hyderabad with Indian Union. Now, December 20, 1949, Moin Nawaz Jeng appealed to United Nations to pressurize India to release the political prisoners. You see the change of demand. Previously, the demand was to save Hyderabad from the accession, to save Hyderabad from India's interference. Now, it is not the issue. The only appeal before the United Nations was to pressurize India to the release to release the political prisoners. So you can see political prisoners, many ministers, many popular people figures of Nizam state were under house arrest or arrested. So political prisoners should be released. This was the demand. So finally, what do you want to say is United Nations issue has never been an issue for India, it could easily counter the United Nations issues, but Hyderabad state umpteen number of times tried to take the help of the international fora, but it could not succeed. So finally, to escape from the legal issues, illegal issues will be there. What are the legal issues? This is accession, military rule and everything. So to escape such issues, even the military was asking the Nizam to issue firmans on his name. Though it is the military government under J.N. Chaudhary, the firmans were issued under the name of Nizam. This is very interesting. First thing is the operation, military operation was called as police action. Second thing is even after the occupation, even after the merger or even after occupying the power in Hyderabad, military was talking as the military rule, but the firman was issued under the name of Nizam. This is to escape the legal issues to escape the international wrath. To show that, you can say that Nehru, uh, Nizam is the real ruler since he is issuing the firmans. We are, we are following it. Military is just assisting him in law and order. This was the thing. But here also, I would like to say about a few words about Nizam when I am talking after a few minutes. After Operation Polo, how Nizam has changed his stance before the Indian government we can talk about. Anyway, now let us talk about the standstill agreement. Standstill agreement is an agreement, a standard agreement between two parties always. Standstill means I will not aggress, you will not aggress and we have some common things and we will have some pact and you will deal with such issues. This is standstill agreement, standstill as we are. Indian policy is to having two things, two, two sides of the weapon. One is letters of accession, second thing is standstill agreement. What are the letters of accession? For example, Indian state is approaching any nation, any independent principality or any princely state. They will be giving the letters of accession. If the leader, if the king of the principality or the prince is ready to accept this accession, just he will sign and immediately that state will merge into Indian Union. Second thing is if someone is not willing, you can enter into standstill agreement where the subjects like defense, external affairs and communication will be dealt by India and the remaining the princely state can be deal with. So this is standstill agreement. Since Nizam is not ready to accept the letters of exception, not ready to sign the letter of accession, so automatically standstill agreement is the only solution before the Indian state. The standstill document was prepared by Nizam and sent to Indian state or central government, Indian government. 
and the draft was redrafted by VP Meenan and many new clauses were added and finally that standstill agreement was signed. That was signed on 29th November 1947. So, standstill agreement is an important document and to supervise whether the standstill agreement is being properly implemented or not, whether it is being implemented or violated, someone has to see, supervise. So, for that supervision, K. M. Munshi was appointed as India's agent general in Hyderabad to supervise the agreement. So, K. M. Munshi, remember this name, just now I talked about end of an era. Hyderabad Memoirs is the book he has written. He played a very important role at a crucial juncture of merger. So, K. Munshi was supervising and in the meanwhile, we can see the standstill agreement is in active uh, thing. So, at that point, there are violations and both the parties are accusing the other party as violators. For example, Nizam was accused of lending 15 million pounds to Pakistan. This accusation was made by Indian Union. Nizam gave 15 million pounds loan. That is giving loan to an enemy will not be good for the Indian state. This is what Indian state viewed. So, this was a crucial aspect. They were saying that you are subversive. This is subversive. They used in some of the documents. Second thing, Ittehad ul Muslimin, that is Ittehad, MIM or Ittehad and its wing, Razakar's activities were also discussed. And railway traffic also discussed. Actually, Nizam is misusing the railway traffic and taking many things. This is another accusation. From Nizam's side, accusations are demands to Indian Union. Indian Union has what you call uh, taken up, uh, they have issued embargo. What do you mean by embargo? Means some of the items, listed items under the GVOs will not be carried in the railways to into Nizam state. Even salt like things were not allowed into Nizam state via Madras province. Salt, medicine, cycles, bicycles, a big items like ginger oil, coconut oil, such things were banned from taking from Hy Madras province into Hyderabad state. So, these are the things. Non-sale of weapons according to standstill agreement, these people were given a choice that Indian government will supply the arms to Nizam. And after the, stand, after the standstill agreement in uh, implementation, Nizam was not getting arms. This is another debate. The, he was writing letters to Indian Union for arms. So, all these things are important in standstill agreement. Remember, this is all the background. Before Operation Polo, all these things are happening. Parleys at the international arena. Discussions with the Indian government and Indian government not ready to accept independence to Hyderabad. That is what we have to understand. So, as a result, Operation Polo was started. They have started Operation Polo. They have sent the armies into Hyderabad state. Operation Polo, it was named as Operation Polo because Hyderabad at the time had large number of polo grounds, more number of polo grounds than any other city in India. So, polo, you know, polo is a royal game. People will be sitting on the horsebacks and playing hockey like game and you will be having goals. That is polo, a royal game. So, Operation Polo was the name of this. At times, it is also known as Operation Caterpillar. So, Operation Polo, Operation Caterpillar or the third one, Police Action. Police Action was the term given by the political people in the political parlance to disguise the military action. Disguising means to conceal the military action. If you say police action, it is limited to law and order. If you say it is military action, it is like aggression. It is like occupying another country. So, this was the thing. Finally, on 13 September morning 1948, the police action in terms of Indian state or Operation Polo in terms of military rule, military parallels or military terminology started just after one day gap of the death of M.A. Jinnah. This was a tactical time. Jinnah died on 11th. Jinnah's death is definitely a blow to Pakistan state. 
Pakistan state will be completely occupied, preoccupied in the mourning and the resettling the aspects after Jinnah's death, political aspects. So that is a crucial time, that is a tactical time. India could take up this accession aspect, means they can send armies and take over Hyderabad state into Indian Union. So this was a tactical step by Indian Union. Just one day after the death of Jinnah, they have initiated this Operation Polo. To understand what is Operation Polo in terms of the understanding, political understanding of leaders, we can see the statements. Nehru repeatedly talked about accession. In many of the newspapers they have reported in 1949, in many of the meetings he clearly said, there are only two courses now open to Hyderabad. One is war or accession. War will take too long. So there is no other go for Hyderabad. It has to accept the accession. This he was saying in the AICC session, All India Congress Committee session, in 1948, 25th April. So this is Nehru stone. Then, we cannot allow any feudal government like Hyderabad, he was saying in many other newspaper clippings and we can see. And talking to reporters, he was talking about Hyderabad. And the man who was the Home Minister, who was crucial in merging the Indian states, that is Sardar Patel. He said, Hyderabad is like cancer in India's belly. This was the statement of Sardar Patel. So, Indian political leaders has seen this entire issue of merger of Hyderabad state as an urgent need. Why they have to merge Hyderabad state? Because of tactical reasons, because of its geographical position, because of its economic reasons. For example, if you take tactical, India, you see the map. If you see the Indian map, there will be a huge area which is not Indian territory if Hyderabad is independent. A huge, a huge territory. Another country means definitely India may feel that this is not good for its sovereignty. And at the same time, there will be issues between these two countries like external affairs, how to m move into the other country also. Because they are two countries if they are independent. Second thing is Hyderabad's strategic position. Hyderabad is strategically located, remember. That is why in 1857, when Turebas Khan was revolting, a letter from the governor of Bombay presidency was clearly mentioning about, if Hyderabad is lost, everything is lost. It means Hyderabad plays a very important role in this region because it is the juncture where you go to south, where you go to west, where you go to east. So east, west and south after Vindhyas, Hyderabad is the juncture. Without passing through the Hyderabad state, you cannot go to these areas. This is very strategic. And third one is, since it is a huge area, you have lot of people with you, a huge population, lot of resources and Hyderabad should be part of the Indian Union. This is the philosophy of Indian state. This is the understanding of Indian state in this period. Because Nizam, a feudal leader, a feudal king, was not ready to accept to merge into Hyderabad, uh, sorry, Indian Union, because he wanted to be in independence. There is another wrong propaganda about the Prime Minister, Layakali, and there is wrong propaganda of Nizam that he wanted to join Pakistan. There are no discussions about joining in Pakistan. Definitely they are having relations with Pakistan like any other diplomatic relations. Enemy's enemy is my friend. This was the thing happening. Because if we see the accounts of Layakali, we can see clearly what are the parleys, what are the discussions being held with Pakistan. All the documents were archived. So this is not hearsay we are doing. Hearsay we are saying. This is Hyderabad wanted independence. This is the only thing. But at times, definitely Pakistan will come into existence, come into come in between India and Hyderabad as a checkmate. That's it. Nothing more than that. So, Operation Polo was the main activity of Indian Union to take away the independence from Nizam. So, Operation Polo. Thank you.